I'm talking about energy. And yeah, it's something you've heard a million times before, but I want to focus on some very specific points. The first of which is the physicality of energy, the physical realness of all forms of energy. We talk, for example, about kinetic energy, say a ball moving, or we talk about potential energy, ball at the top of a hill, because gravity can exert a force on it, push it down, set it in motion, it has potential energy. Or say a compressed spring, you compress an object on a spring, let it go, object set in motion, potential converted to kinetic, all very physical, very real forms of energy. And I find in the textbooks, in the classes, and on the internet, there's always this big jump made from these very simple, physical, real, and familiar forms of energy to the less intuitively physical forms, but the forms of energy which are the most important in our everyday lives. That is chemical energy, gasoline, say, electrical energy, either that produced by a battery or by a generator. And these still seem mysterious, or at least unintuitive compared to the simple mechanical types of energy discussed above. They seem in a sense magical, and they're often spoken of as if they are magic, and they don't seem physically real. I'm trying to express here that indeed, at the microscopic level, there is a certain physical realness to all forms of energy. It's stuff moving around. It's particles bumping into each other. Now to express this, I have to take certain liberties. I have to express things in a bit of a cartoonish, simplified fashion. The objection to this would be that at the microscopic or really submicroscopic level, by that I mean smaller than that which you can even see with a microscope, with visible light, at that level, classical mechanics, the simple macroscopic Newton's laws, your F equals MA and so forth, those disappear and we're left with a world of quantum mechanics, which famously has very little physical intuition associated with it. Well, the other side of the coin is that sometimes that's taken too far. And there is a bit more physical intuition in quantum mechanics than is often talked about. To be specific, in non-relativistic quantum mechanics, there's still classical potential energy curves or surfaces or functions, and those can give us some physical intuition about what's going on. So I talked, for example, about chemical energy. What is happening when, say, I burn gasoline? Now, to connect this, let me first establish, how does gasoline give us mechanical energy? How do we get from gasoline to a simple mechanical form of energy, like stuff moving around? And then from that to perhaps electrical energy. You know, of course, at the basis of all our electricity we produce is mostly fossil fuels. So how does that all work? Let's go through a quick and dirty path from some chemical to electricity coming into your home. I have something which is combustible, say gasoline. I set it on fire, it burns, it creates a lot of hot smoke and gas. That hot gas expands and exerts a pressure on the walls of its container. That pressure can push on a piston, that piston can turn a wheel, that wheel can directly make a car move, or that wheel can be, to put it simply, attached to a coil, turned in the presence of a magnet, and generate electricity which is then brought into our homes. With that established, what is the physical link, besides the fact that we can convert this mysterious chemical energy to a more familiar mechanical form, like turning a wheel? What is the physical essence of gas storing energy itself? It's often said that in chemical energy, the energy is stored in the chemical bonds. At the submicroscopic level, of course, gasoline is made of molecules. When I burn gasoline, these molecules react with oxygen molecules, O2. Combustion in general involves a reaction with O2, and these molecules turn into other molecules. So I ask you to take some cartoonish liberties and imagine what is happening at the molecular level. And imagine these little blocks are connected by springs. Imagine I have two blocks connected by a compressed spring, and there's a string which is keeping the spring compressed. That's like the original gasoline molecule. Then I cut the string. And what happens? The blocks fly away. These blocks can then bang into other blocks, possibly imparting enough energy to break another string and have the cycle repeat. As long as more energy is released from the extension of the springs than it takes to break another string, a chain reaction will occur until all the gas molecules are consumed. 
and we're left with a bunch of separated blocks now flying around even faster than before because they have more energy from the extension of the springs. The spring was like the chemical bond. That greater kinetic energy, that faster motion, is now manifested macroscopically as heat, which is the subject of the next talk.